um, artistically, I don't, I don't do too many artistic things, except for uh, every year I try to make a really nice Christmas ornament for my wife. Uh, and so that's where the, the next phase starts in. Um, and I've, I've done a few pieces that are kind of fun. Um, this was one that was inspired by Cindy Drozda's um, out-of-round, three-sided box that she does. And that's, I mean, if you want the uh, explanations on how to make this part, you can go to her website and she has a full download you can take on making at least the, the center section. And then I just added a nice top piece. And a, don't break that, James. Um, and, and the bottom finial part. And then I, I just glued in, uh, I, I turned a Christmas tree in red palm, and uh, that's what this one was. And this was just an ideal. I watched, I went to SWAT, I saw her demo on it, and I was looking that year for something that was unique and neat to do for a Christmas ornament. And I like stuff, I like to try to do Christmas ornaments that, that really push my ability and skill. And so that definitely pushed my <laughs> ability and skill, I promise you. Uh, and that's one of the few that I've, I did off the bat and got one off, and I, I was really proud of it, and it really came out well. And then um, the next year, uh, 2019, we had somebody come by, and he was talking about doing a six-wing box at the meeting for the, the SWAT that year. And I saw the box, and I was like, oh, I'd like to go see that guy's demo. That, that, I think that I could take that idea and make a really cool ornament out of it. And that's where I came up with my six-wing ornament, which this is a, one, of my, one of my trial pieces of them. And this is something where you first start with a cube and you hold, it between, you hold it between centers this way. And then as you go, you can literally go through the whole step. There's the first part of it turning this way. And then here's, a chuck, here's where I chuck it, chuck it, turn it around. And then... A, that's both directions and then half drilled out for the holes in the center. And then here's at least most of the finished piece. I need to do the, I need to finish the finial on this one, but it's all drilled. It's all been cleared out. And this one, I don't, I thought I'd put one in there, but it doesn't have a Christmas tree in it, but it's done for the most part every other way. And this for me was, it's, it's just, uh, this is spalted box elder. It was some inexpensive wood that I had that would, that would fit the thing. And I wanted to make several of them to, to get the process down. When you're trying to work up an idea you haven't done before, I recommend that. Try to get something that you've, you've got an idea for a project like this. And this is a pretty extensive little project to get into. But it teaches you a lot of kind of fun. It taught me a lot of kind of fun, cool things. How to turn from a square um get you the pro basically box making principles to get this done that's what you're doing and then turning uh hollowing something that's that's been pierced uh it gives you all those things to, to play with and it was really fun it, plus also mounting a little christmas tree in a in an ornament i like doing that and the red palm's kind of fun and uh so that was kind of a fun little crazy project for me and then this year um one of our meetings I think for SWAT, Gordon had asked, he wanted someone to, he'd like to see a, door, a demo on Inside Out Turning. So this year, this is the one, this is the one I turned at the, at the, the one I finished up at the demo last month. And it was learning how to do this was one of those things that was kind of a neat, it was very interesting for me because how do you, how can you do it quickly and effectively as a production turner? Because if I want to make these, it's one thing to make one is, 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 that's, that, that's one thing, but how do you make a bunch at one time? And uh, I was originally going to be doing it like I demonstrated where I was going to tape them all up individually after you, you know, you mark your centers, you turn it around, you flip it out, and then you tape up each side, and that's what I demonstrated then. Well, I had thought about, and this is one I'm going to have to show here because this is too big. Um, I had realized that all I really had to do, I've got them all taped and cut up like this. This is how my blanks are set up at my house right now. And so once, for me at least, all I really do now is I'll mark that center point so that way I know that center point is set and ready to go. And then I have these, these chucks are uh, bulldog chucks of the BD-275s. And I realized that on these step jaw chucks, 
I literally can get them tagged in like so. Doo -doo -doo. But then I can have it hold this one holding that side, and then once it's set in the chuck, this guy holding that in, and that's secured this way. It's secured very well. The, the, the joints on them are normally usually really tight. I don't have this side tightened down right now. But this makes it to where saves me at least you know, three to five minutes, I'd say, per piece. And when you got 70 of these to do, that's you know almost three hours. Uh, that's a lot of time. And as a production turner, time is money. <laughs> and any way you can find to figure out how to speed up time is a great thing. And these are, I know, the, the BD-275 chucks, but it's the same equivalence as the uh, Vicmark, smallest Vicmark chuck that they mark. And I think they have a step jaw set that you can buy because I know, I know uh, uh, Bulldog is no longer, doesn't have any of those for sale. But that's a, that was something that I figured out recently that just in how to learn how to make a... Uh, Make make a chuck or, or or speed up my process at least. Uh, design is design. Whatever is in your brain at one given time, you can always find a way to make it, and that's the fun part. But and then I got my my large project over here. This is the fun one. Now this is my original prototype for this project, and and I call this we call this my tool station, and this is a N roughly nine inch or so block is what I use now and it, it's on, based on a lazy it's got a lazy Susan kit and this whole project came about because I had someone contact me and she sent me a picture of uh, five or six different little blo small blocks that she had all of her stitching stuff in and she said is there any way you could make something big enough to hold all of it together and my wife and I spent that evening after that discussing, you know, what she would want, how, and, and I was telling her, well, I can do that or I can't do that. It's one of those things of where you got to, well, we like this, we don't like that. And I was saying, well, if, you, if you're going to make anything this big, you want it to be able to spin so you're not reaching over the top of something and yanking stuff out. That was my thing. I like the fact that it has my, our smaller blocks in it, so that way if somebody wanted to go to a different part of the house and they didn't want to drag the whole thing around they could at least they only needed a few things to work on whatever they want they can take it with them or if they're going to a convention or s seminar or whatever they have that option but it gives them it also enough production stuff to do whatever they whatever they want and so that was this one was made in redwood and it's my first prototype this wood is exceptionally soft and uh, when I told my wife I wasn't going to sell it, she immediately complicated it. She was like, why aren't you going to sell it? And I'm like, well, because I can literally come over here and scratch it with my fingernail. It's, it, it's just really garbage wood. But it was, I wanted, to, make a, I wanted to, to figure out how to make this first. This was my first one. And I parted it by hand on the lathe and it took me forever. And I really, I was like, God, how am I going to make any money making these? Because that, that, was, that was the issue. How do you make money? It's not making it, but how do you make money as a production turner making this? And so it went through several edifications, and I, I, figured, out how to, but I figured out how to do it. But then now it depends, on, depends a little bit on what I want to make. Am I going to use um, a, natural, a solid natural block? And this is a block of 9 by 4 Kiln dried cherry. It's got to be kiln dried because anything is not. If I tried to make this at one time, it would it'd crack like crazy. And I've had a couple that I thought were dried and they weren't and wasted my time and the cost of the, the wood because I ruined them. And so I wanted to first get the, ooh, sorry. The first thing I got to figure out was, you know, how to mount it. And I normally mount it on a screw chuck and I will turn the whole, the, the, the base, the base part of it first. And then I take that screw chuck, and this is a, a, a jig that I made that fits my bandsaw. And I mount my screw chuck on here, and it's set up on my bandsaw to cut off exactly one inch on the bottom. So that gives me my one inch base here, and then I can normal, normal four jaw chuck the rest of it. And that's how I do, that's how I get 
this piece separated and that it, I already have the check checking based on the bottom of this and it was kind of that's that, that's how I do that but this was the, and it worked very well when I had standard dry wood the problem was some people like the colorful wood that I work with and this stuff is this stuff is pet this this stuff is called spectroply and so I, I when I get it it's a nine and a half by 40 inch by whatever thickness I want to buy block of of mass when I get it and then so I first cut it apart and then I, I have a little quarter inch hole that I have a jig where I cut it round ish on my table on my bandsaw so that way this I can and then I can put it on a screw chuck and that's what I prefer to screw to cut that with but I don't want to buy a four inch piece of it if I don't have to because it's a little more expensive so I buy a three inch and a one inch well the problem is how do you chuck how do you get that first chuck of a one inch piece of wood that's nine and a half inches wide and that was something I had to, I had to try to figure out to do effectively I could have used a, a, a prong drive or whatever but when you've got a prong drive the biggest problem is is you're only you're holding here any deflection at that 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 range even five degrees off from center is going to shrink up this piece a lot more than I want it to be and so I had to figure out a way to really get a good base hold and I had bought this uh, to do something very similar um, a lady had contacted me to make some cloche bases she wanted them in purple heart because the ones the, the cloche that she bought came with this driftwood looking gray stuff and she was they were making these really beautiful elaborate bunnies that were all stitched and it was it was full standing they were beautiful I got pictures on my phone if y'all want to see those later but um, I needed something to hold to hold the, the base and this is uh, Amy Griggs' spike plate and it's this, it, it has a pin that comes here I just don't have it right now but um, you, 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 it's designed so that way you can mount a blank quickly just with tailstock pressure and for bowl turners who just want to cut the end and get a chuck ready, that's it, it, you can saves you the hassle of having to do a um, a screw chuck or or between centers or whatever. But for me, I now just take my tailstock point, bring it up here, put that on this, and then I can turn it holds it, that holds it solid, and then I just cut my 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 four jaw chuck center for my this this will be the inside of the of the of the piece the, the or it'll be here and so i can cut the the hole there that i need and then move it to a regular chuck but it i don't have to worry about over drilling a hole here this is only in like a quarter of an inch so i can cut the so it fits on my my um circle cutting jig and i don't have to worry about it well the, the, and so that was has how that worked but the, and I'm going to go a lot faster than I expected to. Um, the one thing, and then, then the one thing I had to worry about was how do I get this guy centered? Because this is the, the, the hardware for the Lazy Susan kit. And how do you get that centered on, the, you know, how do you, how do you get this centered on this piece of wood? And so I came up, this is something I just came up with. I don't know if it, if, I don't know if it was anybody's design before me. I haven't seen anybody use it. But basically I cut a little piece of wood here, hard and, and tight so it fits on that. And then I, uh, on these, I'll, this one I have the hole already drilled. I, I cut all of this, most, a lot of this on a, on a, four, on, on a screw chuck because I just like screw chucks. They work well for me. And then I can set this sucker here, and I'll usually put double stick tape when I'm, when I'm setting it up for, for drilling the holes. I'll get that on that, that knot and then pop it down, and then it's stuck there, and then I can mark or drill my holes through the, through the piece, and then I can take it off again. And uh, that was something I figured out to do just to give me a little bit of assurance into drilling uh, getting getting th that centered so I'm not, you know, uh, making a concentric <laughs> a lazy Susan. And so that was uh, one of those crazy things.
uh, trying to figure when you when you're trying to figure things out, you never know what's going to happen. So, but uh, yeah, that's well, I got through that faster than I thought I would. <laughs> what's up, Gordon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one, okay, basically there's, you can see there's, there, this one has one with four holes on it and one with, uh, f yeah, or one with uh, eight holes and one with four holes. This is the top piece. This one goes on the, if, if, if you're drilling it on this piece here, actually I think this one's a little looser so it's not quite as brutal on the, on the hand. I have two of them that I've made. Pop, there. Okay, now this one has four holes. Drill those in. And then this one, th this one you're supposed to, when you, when you set it on the, on the bottom side, you drill in, you drill in these smaller holes that are here, and you drill those in from the bottom up. You've got to have a, you, you've got to, that's why you have to have your holes drilled all the way through the base. And then uh, I countersink, uh, I use a countersink bit on the bottom and drill in so that way I have enough clear uh, I use like a three-quarter inch screw but I, I countersink them down as, as, as low as I go you drill the you, you first drill this sucker into the base or in the into your top piece and then I use um, the holes that I have pre-drilled I use um, what are those things called uh, barbecue skewers uh, uh, shish, shish kebab sticks I stick them through the holes here I get them lined up there, hold it, line it up, so we have the holes come through, so I can drill the holes in. Because trying to trying to you know blind eye drill those holes from the bottom into that little tiny spot's a pain in the butt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some of, yeah, yeah, and, and if, if you have a square base and a round, sometimes you can, you know, it, this, I could probably, these, the, the biggest problem with this is that it's, it's exactly size to size, so there's no gap on the side if I had a square or, or whatnot on that. I, if that was, if I had a square base or a square top, sure, it'd be great. Um, but with this system, that's the way these are designed, and the dumb thing was for the longest time, and I think this one has it on there, I thought I was supposed to drill through the fatter holes on the side, so I was actually gluing nuts to the outside piece so I had something to, to screw into because I didn't know. I was like, how am I supposed to get that to stay there? It, nothing's going to hold that. You know, I can't back it up while I'm trying to get through the bottom. I didn't have enough space. And then I went back like, and read the directions, and it said, yeah, you're supposed to use this style of screw and screw into that little hole there. And I'm like, oh, that makes more sense. So that's what I started doing. And it, it helps every now and then it does help to read the instructions every now and then and I, I, had, I had fought literally fought with like four of them one night trying to figure out why I couldn't get them to go in there and then I read the instructions I was like oh you idiot oh, man and so that's one of those things if this is this, this piece is, is evolved and it's now an effective working production I've got I got it down but it there was a lot of uh, head scratching and, and nightmares of uh, how am I going to get X to work or Y to work in, in getting working through the process of, of building a piece like this in, in production is always, you know, one of those things that that's, that's a crazy amount of fun to, to figure out. And this, I know, um, there's so many ways you can look at stuff and say, yes, you can make it. No, you can't. How, or, or how to make it and how to, I could hand, I could hand a, a production turner, a piece and say make reproduce this and there may be one or two processes the same as mine and the rest of them could be you know, and everything else could be different uh it, it'd be it's, it's something i'd love to pick with a couple of guys and say here you know make this ornament you know make go home here's a block make make me an inside out ornament and see and then have them show their process and just to see how they do it because everybody's going to have a little bit different in making something even guys who are full-time professional wood turners yes sir randy I have to the, uh, lazy susan. yes i do oh i do recess the lazy susan so it doesn't show because if you know that between this right here you're gonna have that big gap and you can see i only have that gap there so i do and that's actually how i chuck it 
that the recess that I have in here is is whatever the I have a the ch the chuck that I use is is has a I have a step jaw on it like this and I use that as the the outside gap and whatever whatever when I have it fully closed and in there it, it it's the perfect size to fit corner to corner on this guy he, I mean I, I have like a half inch play so I mean yeah it's that's that's how I chuck it uh, on the bottom so it, it works well but it gives me I recess it you know, eighth of an inch maybe just to give it so that way it's not that high up off of each of them do 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 well, but you got you got quite a bit of height here if you I'm trying to get it on the camera you can see how much that height is and so you don't want that you don't that that's going to look ugly in a, in a production piece so yeah I um and that's how when I when I get it off the spike plate I have the recess I have the I have that recess and then I do the the base and then I turn it back around clean this up sand it all the fun things that you do and that you do when you make stuff and so it gets you all the and actually that's like one of the corners I cut off I've mounted here so I could reinforce my <laughs> if you want to see what you do with your scraps this blue piece of wood right here is one of the corners I cut off one of these these round guys it wasn't holding very well so I was like I just stuck that down in there and This blue piece right here, it's over that side. Okay, that one was one that I'd cut off. And I have a bunch of these. Anybody want, any, any segmenter want a lot of, it's one inch wood. It's really nice stuff. You get a lot of nicer one inch segments out of it. It's real pretty. And I've got multiple colors of it. <laughs> I have, I think I have six different color. Spectraply comes in over 50 different color combinations. Uh, that they sell I have every they have it I have 30 different varieties of colors that I have for the small blocks and everything that they offer that's three different colors or more and then and there's a couple of two colors like they have a pink and gray that sells real well for me and a, and a, and a purple and gray uh, that sells real well for me so I have a couple of two color ones that I, that I use that, that, that sell real well but this, this blue here is my best seller this is the, the, that it's a, it's a dark blue, a light blue, and, and the natural or white. It's a laminated birch, dyed laminated birch. And in for these big big blocks here, I've got this color. I've got one they call gem wood, which is purple, orange, blue, and yellow. I think it's it's a really cool color combination. Um, the one that's blue, gray, and white. Uh, one that's called Circus, which is like five colors. It's yellow, red, gray, but I've got a bunch of them. And uh, I've got all the corners that I ever cut off that I have, if I haven't glued them to the side of something, I still have all those. And uh, anybody who wants some segmenting wood, you are more than welcome to take as much. I have it in both one and three inch pieces. So you can come have whatever you'd like. <laughs> Nine, uh, nine and a half by 40 by. by one inch to I mean you can get them as thin as half inch no, it's four inches. yeah you know, it's three inches here and then one inch here is what I buy nine nine and a half by 40 so it's 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 40 inches inches 40 inches it's but I can I can get basically four of these out of one block they're not cheap it's not cheap but uh, there's a the, the, this wood is like this set is like seventy bucks in wood for me to get them, which is the one thing I I, I never have understood about Spectraply. Their big blocks, which I'm assuming they make to cut down to their turning stock per per cubic inch, is more expensive than buying the turning block. I don't understand that. I can buy a three by three by twelve. It's cheaper per square inch or cubic inch than I can to buy the three by nine, the three by four by ninety or whatever. You know the big. The big block, it's it's like two cents more per cubic inch expensive to get the big one over getting the turning block. Don't understand that. Uh, about an hour and a half. Hour and a half, two hours, somewhere in there. Depends. Um, these a little faster. 
the wood's a little bit more expensive. This one's about two hours. This is about an hour and a half because I, I can't, once I start it, I have to cut it. I have to get it through that point there and cutting it on the bandsaw does take a little bit more time than just being able to, to do one piece or the other. But these, when I do these, it's like I do the bottom all at one time. I finish those up and then I do the top and I, I keep the sets together because I have to keep them depending on what I want on these um, because you know, the color pattern goes in a certain direction. Uh, yep, right direction. So it's light. It, it's it's the natural, the dark blue, and so this piece should actually be on. If, if it was on the bottom, that's the way this is going to go, as as the as the piece. And so I've got to make sure that the woods match the right direction. And the piece does look different depending on what side, what color you get. If you have, like, if I have the the white on top, or if I have the dark blue on top, it it kind of does change the, 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 the appearance of as what color is the most prominent to what you want to do. And so that's one thing that I have discovered with these, and especially on some of the ones that have four, four colors, you can, you can really play with the, the, the feel of the piece by what's the most prominent color that you show. And I've, I've had a lot of the small blocks that I've done when I've turned them one side to the other in the Spectraply that they look almost com completely different just because of the way the colors are coming which color is more prominent on one side versus the other and it's the same color combination it's the exact same piece they just look completely different because of the way the colors come through yeah well the pl it, it's just the coloring because it, it's a matter of, is are you looking at it white light blue to dark or are you looking at it this way where it's white dark blue to white light blue and so which ones when you start cutting through it because this stuff i looking at it this way it looks it looks it looks boring as sin it's just a simple pattern of, of wood color now I'm gonna I have so I know I have I have plenty of pictures of this stuff so um, this tool station is 200 70 bucks okay take it over here okay now that's 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 the four of the smaller blocks that I make the acorn, that's the queen of hearts, that's the tulip, and that's my standard in cove shape. But you can see how, they, how different it looks once you get the color. Well, you can see the colors in the different spans of what they're doing. Uh, that's, that's a, uh, these are four of their colors. That, that's the Caribbean wave, which is this one. This is gemwood. That one's called safari, and that one's called royal jacarta. And again, it, it a lot depends. This is one where I made some natural woods, and then I had people who wanted the, the, the different colored ones that went with it. And uh, so it depends on what someone... That was, that was a crazy order. And then these are all just the... But like, like where you can see here where you have the white on top, and that's very striking. You don't realize how white that gets when you've got that much of it at one point. And then the ones with the dark wood on the the dark blue on it changes the whole feel of the piece once you get into cutting it at that you know we're looking at it in that direction. So it's been kind of a fun thing for me to play with when I've gone through them. But that's just I don't know what all I have. So if you turn that piece you have right up there, it's going to be white. If it depends on on what if if I left it as it is, if if, if I didn't decide to go down farther to it, yes, top of it would be. The top would be white. I would probably go down to the dark blue. I think it looks a little better. Um, just uh, light, if I had the light blue, it'd be nice. But I also have enough here. I, it's they're a little bigger than three inches. I, th I think it's yeah. It's at least I think one of these. It's at least two two bands of of ply bigger than three inches. So, so the ply is colored all the way. It's all the way. Yeah, they they take it. You can watch these. They take they take a whole sheet. And it's, 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 you know, and then they dye the whole thing and then they glue them together. And so, yeah, it's, they're, they're complete. It's not like you're only seeing the edge. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's dyed. I mean, it's dyed completely through and it, I've never had a piece where I've sliced apart and, and I've had some spots, you know, you, you, where the dye didn't take very well. Uh, and and you're, you're, you're working along and you got this nice blue, dark blue section and there's this light white or brown or, you know, not that, that that showed through that didn't that didn't take the dye very well. But for the most part, it comes very evenly colored and it's real nice. Turt will hut mostly. Wax just I used to, I used to use a wax polish. It works well. It it, it shines well and it 
Leaves a really nice finish that's pretty easy to maintain. As a, as a poise of 70 on, or no, it's 40 bucks for this, 70 for that. But I've got more hours in this. I have more physical time making this one because of how I have to have cut it apart. And there's more, there's just more time consuming in cutting the chucking off or cutting the chucking into it because of, I've got to true it up once it's sawed. The, 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 that works pretty well, but I still have a little bit of a, it's like a one degree curve that I've got to true back up once I cut it. So there's a lot more, there's more labor in the natural wood. Um, there's more cost in the, in the dyed stuff. They sell it about equally, so I don't care. As long as, if, if people don't argue about the price, I'm, I'm not too compa- <laughs> com- complainive. And if I was going to make a bowl out of that, a, a beautiful cherry bowl and in nine inches, you know, that, that thick, I'd get about that much money for it anyway. So I'm, I'm, and I'm not turning a bowl, you get more wood. I like to see the, it's beautiful. The one nice thing about any of this is you can always, the, I can look at what side, there's a, like a cool, uh, you really can't see it in the camera, I'm sure, but there's a cool piece of figure right here that I'll try to leave. This, the, this was sitting in the log, the tree I believe this way. This is the outside, this is the inside, and you've got some fun bark, you, you've got more fun, so I can set it up depending on if I want, which side I want, what, where, where the figure's going to come in. As to what's the top, what's the bottom, you get to play with that a little better without having to deal with. I don't, don't know. I don't think you can see it though. You can do 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 because I mean it's right here, but I just don't. I just don't think there's enough light to get the yeah a little bit, but not much. You can come up and look at it later. But it's it's that's the one nice thing about the one nice thing about doing these is I can do that. This one is a matter of what color I want to set through and. Some of the ones that, if it doesn't have the white in it, the, the color combinations, I did the ones, the the Royal Jakarta that's got the, the brown, red, and gray, and it's kind of neat flipping those, depending on what colors are topped, because you get a chance to really see, it, it, it'll it'll change the whole feel of the piece as to what's the pro- most prominent color in the, in the thing, and they've got some crazy colors, they got one they called Tequila Sunrise, I thought was going to be hideous, it's bright yellow, orange, and red. And I was like, oh, that's got to be the most nastiest thing when you turn it. It is actually one of the coolest colors once it's turned. And sp- it, once it's turned, it looks beautiful. But I was just like, God, that's got to be really gaudy. But no, nah, it looks great. So you can never, you never know until you, I, I, you never know until you make it round and start playing through the depths of the colors. It's kind of like spalting. You don't know how the spalting is going to come through until you've cut through it and you get a chance to see the layers and, and how it plays in, on, on the, in the plane of the, or in the multiple planes, not the single plane. So, uh, walnut. I've used walnut, maple. Um, it just depends on whatever I can get and kiln dried it four inches thick. That's the biggest kick, kick. The kicker on this is I have some I have some walnut and I have some cherry right now. Um, the, the maple doesn't sell quite as well because it's just boring white and a big piece that's boring white doesn't really sell that well. Um, but um, I've made some. Rainbow Poplar, which was really nice. It had, it had some nice colorations to it. Uh, I've done some mesquite ones. The biggest, the, the most expensive thing I ever made in my life, someone ordered one of these in Coca Bolo. Yeah. You have no idea. When you, when you spend 400 bucks on one piece of wood, yeah, that's because it's, it's, it's one of those things when you're looking at it. If I mess this up once, I don't make any money. If I mess it up twice, I'm out a lot. And uh, I had two ladies order one because they, they, they just didn't care. They're like, I don't care. I want the most neat, nice, expensive thing I can find. And I'm like, it's this wood. And I've tried to, I tried to put a price on it that they wouldn't buy. And they're like, nope, sold. And I'm like, oh, God, I got to make it now. <laughs> and yeah, oh, yeah, there's, there's nothing more nerve-wracking than when you're trying to figure out how to make something. And if you know if you screw it up, you're, you're not going to make any money on it. <laughs> yeah, that's not fun. Uh, but yeah, one, making one of these in Coca Bolo that was that was probably the most nerve wracking job I've ever had in my life, so far at least. I'm sure I'll get something. Um, I, I usually it's it's a cove. You really can't tell it very well, but I, I uh, it just seems to work well. It's a, a very there's not much to try to. I don't want to waste too much mass. That I cut tw- there's uh, twenty twenty four holes on the outside that are three eighths of an inch. And then the inside, I have two that are one inch, two to the three quarters, and then four that are, I think it's 16 millimeters. It's just barely bigger than five-eighths because I cut these at five-eighths of an inch, and I want them to fit 
in that hole. And so this one's a little bigger because I made it a long time ago before I was standardizing them. Um, but I, so most of every, my magnets and my Takeo Bari cases, the BOT cases, um, are all cut to five eighths of an inch. So I wanted a hole that would fit them in there for, for people buying them. And so that's the 16 millimeter uh, hole. Actually, I, 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 as I said, I, I turn these on a screw chuck and I have a jig that I, has the screw for the screw chuck mounted in it and it sits on a, it's got a, it's on a rotary um, vise that's got the, all the, it's got degrees marked on it. So I know that for, you know, this one is, is six, there's six holes. So every 30 degree, every 30 degrees or whatever, 60, 60 or 30 degrees, 30 degrees, that is, you know, whatever it is. Um, I marked that one at 12. It's, you know, every 15, this one's every 10. I know my marks, so that way I can, you know, just do whatever I need, and then I can, it, it's just easy. And the fun thing is, is if you can figure out, just divide whatever number into 360, and then, you know, go one or up or down if it's a weird one that doesn't divide evenly into it. Um, it I've done seven holes on something, and, you know, it's, you just got to, okay, it's 37, and then the next one's 38, the next one's 37, next one's 38, you know. Whatever it is, just so you know how to how to how to touch how to how to cut your cut your marks. But that it's probably one of the most uh, useful jigs that I own, or useful tools that I own. Is was it was that so I could be the only problem is I have to like I have it supported with wood, and and when I when I actually when I drill these because it's sticking so far off the chuck, I have a piece of wood that I come over and slide in, so I can drill the hole in. Because if not, it's 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 only got that screw chuck in the center. And so the pressure of drilling it will cause it to, on, on these big ones, it'll cause it. Little guys, no big deal. They, they drill pretty easily. But the big ones, I got I to gotta put something underneath the side of it so it'll hold when I drill. And that's one of those things that it's just the nature of the beast. You've got to make sure that you can drill. Because the problem is, is if it starts pulling out, it's not drilling to the inside. It's drilling to the outside. And then we have problems. <laughs> If it was if it was drilling to the inside, oh hey, now everything fits us out, so that's even better. But no, it doesn't do that. So I've I've got to make sure that I've and I've ruined many of these when I've drilled I've, because I've drilled I, I I didn't have my holes my, my 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 system lined up and drilled through the bottom of whatever turning detail I'd put on these before, and I have three or four of them over the years that I have messed up because of that. Uh, drilling through the bottom of or, or the side of a detail never fun because that's like the last thing you, it's it's it'd be it'd be like messing you're know, breaking it when you're putting the finish on because i'm basically done <laughs> it's just the last thing i've got to do but yeah i i hope this was informative and, and educational and you, you helps people understand something of the craziness that i go through at least you know That depends on what I'm making. Um, I, I tr I'm, I'm trying to bill myself at, at about a $30, $30 an hour rate. That's what I'm trying to bill myself at uh, because of just where I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing. There are certain projects, as I get better at them, I make more money on them because I've been doing them a little bit longer. These blocks now I can cut in like you know, 20 minutes. I sell, them, I sell most of them for about 45 bucks, So they're not too bad. Um, but you know stuff that i'm uh, like pins the, the magnets even though i get I, I sell them for 35 they take 30 minutes or plus on and so be, you know by the time you take the 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 cutting the drilling the gluing the truing them up all those if you're not if i'm not making 15 of them at a time it's almost not worth my time because of getting getting those stages set up that you have to do multiples at once so that way you can get in that rhythm it's a whole lot easier if I'm doing a onesie twosie off of those, I'm not charging enough money because of just on, on, on sheer time of, of, of effort to just all the, the little steps. The turning part, I can turn them in six minutes. It's getting to that point that I can't, you know, it's getting to that point is the problem, you know. You yeah, if you're, it depends on what I'm, I mean, most of the time if it's the, um, I'm, I'm, I, I use a very limited selection of tools just because it's the way I've been, the way I've taught myself to turn. Most of the time, I use, I use a, a one inch and a half inch skew. 
I use a three quarter or a three eighths uh, spindle gouge, and I have a uh, three eighths bowl gouge from Crown that I use uh, when I make these. The skews I I run a six hundred grit credit card hone before I start each one takes t ten strikes on both sides, and then that's it. The the spindle gouges I'll sharpen every morning. Um, usually they'll make me the day. They're, it's cryo steel, and so it usually it'll make me a day without having to worry about sharpening them. And so it depends on. I try. To, I, I'm, I love Thompson steel. It's great. It's not always worth the expense. Um, it's good. It's good steel, and it works really well. Um, but as long as you've got a good, I, I'd say a cryo level steel or better that can hold that can hold a one a one day edge. I'm good. I mean, if I, bowl turning is a little bit different because you're cutting through bark and stuff like that that you got to worry about, and and that that all depends on what you're cutting. Uh, there's been things I've cut through that I I've watched my edge just disappear. A mesquite bark was I did one of these in mesquite and it had a bark inclusion, really cool piece, and that bark would rip my edge on my. I had a Thompson I have a Thompson half inch spindle gouge that I was just losing the edge on. Yep. I mean, you'd get, I was just like, God, dog it, how, this is, this is the best thing I could put on here, and it's still just, yeah, and then, so I, I basically had to have everything, I had everything set up on that turn, on that particular, that was the, that was on the, 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 the base going to the ground, and I was trying to get that all, I had the inside curve the way I wanted it, and the base set up, and all this good stuff, and it was right here on the edge, and I, I was just like, okay, I've, sharp, I've got my tool sharpened. Let's get all this stuff done. And then, okay, now let's finish that off. <laughs> and then I can make one cut, go sharpen, make one cut, go sharpen, and finally got it set up. But it was, yeah, it depends on what you're cutting, and you've you got to learn that really quickly. Um, I did, I did a um, urn for my uncle's funeral um, in 2019, and he was... My uh, uh, my uncle was Dr. James Lee Carter. He was, he, but he cracked the code for synthetic lunar material. So he he has the patent on it. So we had some of his synthetic moon dust that, and I wanted to mount it in some epoxy in his urn. I thought, okay, yeah, no problem. I can cut through this. No big deal. I watched the edge of my Thompson gouge not just dull but rip away as I cut through that epoxy. I mean, it just completely shredded. I, had to, I spent 20 minutes reprofiling that gouge when I was done. I had to break out my easy wood carbides, and I could get through it, but I promise you I had to switch my cutter. I had to rotate my cutter when I was done with that because I don't know what that stuff was made from, but you could sandblast the heck out of something with it because it would rip everything apart. It's brutal stuff. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was one of the few times when I was like, okay, carbides it is. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a very soft mineral, but it's still got enough silica in it that it'll tear your tear your tools up pretty quick. And it depends on what you're cutting. So yeah, there's too many too many things you can add. It's when you add stuff to wood that it gets really crazy. But yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you guys.